Hello, I'm Justice Jennifer Bruner of the Ohio Supreme Court, also candidate for Chief Justice of the Ohio Supreme Court, and I'm here with my series, Achieving Justice, and I'm so pleased to have with me today Amber Crow, who is a magistrate in Summit County and a candidate for the Ninth District Court of Appeals, which includes Summit, uh, Medina, um, help me out, Wayne and Lorraine counties. <laughs> I've been doing so much redistricting, I can't keep which districts are straight. So uh, Amber, welcome here today, and we're so glad to have you. Oh, thank you for having me, Justice Bruner. I greatly appreciate it, and I love the idea of uh, doing this Achieving Justice. So thank you for letting me be a part of it. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, so first of all, your name is spelled C-R-O-W-E. So I'm sure everyone asks you if you're related to either Cheryl or Russell. Maybe you can explain. Well, yeah. So Uncle Russell and Aunt Cheryl. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> my name is C-R-O-W-E. Um, I do. I, I laugh and I do tell folks that, you know, Uncle Russell will be here soon. Everyone just calm down. But um, as of right now, I have not figured out that I'm actually actually related to either um, Russell or Cheryl. But it would be really nice because I think we're all equally talented. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, well, um, you have like such an interesting background because you've done time. Um, you've you've served. I shouldn't say done time in, in that context. Um, you've served as a, an assistant prosecutor. You've been in private practice. You're a magistrate uh, in juvenile court, and you've done so many things, um, government and civic wise, in your community, and been recognized as an up and coming leader in the Akron area. So can you tell us a little bit about your professional background? Absolutely. So um, I was very fortunate that when I was in law school, I've always been somebody who likes to work. So I've worked full time all throughout college. Um, I was with Judge Teodosio's Family Resource Center from 2011. So after my first year of law school, 2011, until I completed. And it was during that time that I absolutely fell in love with working with families and communities. So I, I helped design a truancy mediation diversion program for the Summit County Juvenile Court while I was still in law school. And then I was very fortunate that right out of law school, I secured a position under Sherry Bevan Walsh with the Summit County Prosecutor's Office. I um, litigated on behalf of Summit County Children's Services cases of child abuse, neglect, and dependency. And I did that for about 15 to 16 months before I was promoted to um, litigating and prosecuting criminal felonies. And I did that prior to entering private practice. And in private practice, I was there for about five, five and a half years. And I, I focused on criminal defense, family defense, a lot of family law, um, divorce, disillusions, some adoption work. I did my favorite, I, I probably shouldn't say I have favorites, but one of my favorite pieces of my private practice work was doing my guardian ad litem work. So I was an advocate for um, children who have been adjudicated, abused, neglected, and or dependent here in Summit County. Can you and explain I, what a guardian ad litem does uh, specifically? Absolutely. So a guardian ad litem is an attorney who is appointed. And so we have an identified client that is the child, but rather than advocating for what the client's wishes are in court, we advocate for what their best interests are. And so there are several factors that are enumerated in the Ohio Revised Code that help us drive what, you know, um, it would be a best interest determination. So, you know, it's the interaction and relationships with their family, their custodial history, their need for permanency and that sort of thing. But as a guardian ad litem, I took that, that role very, very seriously. And it, 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 it requires a lot of extra work. So we're doing home visits, we're doing school visits, we're talking with families, we're talking with temporary placements, foster, um, foster families, we're speaking with counselors, other collaterals, making sure that we have a really, really good picture of the history of the child, what's going on currently, and then making sure that we're making um, the best recommendations possible for the court to help the court determine what decisions they need to make in the best interest of the child. So you're spending a lot of time with people in all walks of life, then it seems like. Oh, I, I've spent time with people from every corner of many, many counties, uh, many, many cities, and I absolutely love it, you know. Um, I've been there for graduations. I've been there for some of my clients um, having babies. I've also been there during the not so great times where, you know, we're sitting on the couch and we're try I'm trying to help them process things that happened in court or what will happen in court. And uh, I can tell you that during my guardian ad litem work, I really, I've always been very close with, you know, my mom and my sister, but I really placed a lot of value on um, 
my mom, especially when I got into doing the guardian ad litem work, because what I've noticed with some of my, particularly my younger females I was working with, like in restore court is they don't have always a mom to call. And even now at my age, if I have the, the most minor inconvenience, I call my mom and, you know, I talk to her multiple times a day and she, she's just really a pillar for me and they don't always have that. So if I can be that for someone, you know, an ear, somebody to help guide, just making sure that that's what I am here for to be a support for them through their court process. That's what I did. Oh, that's great. So, so how did that lead to being a magistrate? So I, um, I did also as part of private practice, I did criminal work. And so I became, you know, familiar with judge Nicole Walker at the Akron municipal court. And I heard she had an opening and judge Nicole Walker was very, very excited that I was interested in that opening. And I was excited that she was interested in me. And I I spoke with her. She felt like it would be a great fit. And so I spent um, time with judge Nicole Walker all through the pandemic. So she was our, um, presiding judge at the time. And I really had to give her a kudos. She did a nice job kind of guiding Akron Municipal Court and working with the other judges, the community through some of those really tough times during our, our COVID-19, um, the sure. initial phases of it. Because Anna, in Franklin County, the Municipal Court is called the People's Court. And so there's a lot of uh, everyday ordinary contact with people. And that I'm sure that was challenging during the pandemic. It was challenging and, you know, things had to get modified and changed really quickly. But one of the things that I really fell in love with about Zoom is we were able to kind of be, be flexible for folks. So what I was telling, what I would tell people, and I still tell people, and I still believe it to this, you know, very moment is we are public servants, magistrates, the judiciary. And sometimes I think people forget that, you know, courts belong to the people, So I have this very, very vivid memory of a gentleman who was appearing for a pretrial and his attorney was, you know, he called a sidebar. We were speaking and he said, this gentleman is very, very nervous. He, he can't make it. This was after, you know, we were resuming some in-person. He said, he can't make it. Um, He doesn't have transportation from work, he job issues. I said, have him hop on zoom. We conducted the pretrial. He appeared. It was completely appropriate. So even in all of the the dark, you know, that we had out of the, out of COVID-19, we were able to use technology, make sure we were meeting people where they were, which is, I think, an important part of also being a magistrate and, and hopefully one day a judge. Yeah. And, and so explain to people just what a magistrate does. So a magistrate is appointed um, by a judge and we have a lot of the same, same duties, but the way I always explain to people is if you have an issue with a decision I've made, you have the ability to object to the judge. So the judge oversees everything I do. She's making sure that my decisions, um, you know, follow, follow the law and that what I'm doing is 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 appropriate, if you will. But a lot of our, our duties are, are the same. So I preside over cases. I make decisions. I hear motion hearings. I'm, as a magistrate in the juvenile court, I preside over trials because there aren't jury trials. So I'll hear anything from a, you know an unruly or a minor misdemeanor case all the way to an F1, which would be the most serious of alleged offenses. Obviously, it's slightly, it differs slightly because juvenile law is considered civil in nature, even though it is very um, akin to criminal proceedings. Juveniles aren't technically guilty or not guilty. They are, they either admit or they deny, or so they're delinquent or non-delinquent. But, um, you know, motions to suppress, I've heard, trials, pre-trial hearings, I hear juvenile CPO, so a civil protection order, traffic cases. I, I hear the gamut over at the juvenile court. So my, my role is very similar to what the judge does, but I do, um, people can rest assured that my decisions are being reviewed by Judge Teodosio. Interesting. Very interesting. And that's Judge Linda Teodosio. Correct. Linda Teodosio um, at the juvenile court. And I'm running alongside her husband, Judge Tom Teodosio, who is currently running for re-election on the Ninth District Court of Appeals. Oh, very good. So how many judges are on the Ninth District Court of Appeals? Five. Five. And so are there are three seats up this year out of the five, correct? There are. So there are three seats up. Um, Judge Tom Teodosio is running for re-election as well as the incumbents. Um, they're the two other judges, one of whom I am running against. I understand. Yeah. So so your district is um, has some significant rural areas in it as well. And you mentioned New Franklin. Is that where you grew up? 
It is. So New Franklin um, is a city out in the Portage Lakes area. It was all originally Akron. It did become its own city a couple years back. That's still, still currently where I reside. So born and raised in Northeast Ohio here. And it, it, it's, I love New Franklin because it's got great rural areas, but it's also very, you know, just has its, its suburban areas as well. So it, it's very well blended. Um, born and raised, went to Manchester. And I think I'm hopeful that that will serve me well in certain parts of my, of my district, you know, whether that be Lorraine, Wayne or Medina County, having that combination of suburban, rural, with also all of my work that has been done, you know, in the more city and urban areas. But I, I thought it was interesting that you serve on the, um, the zoning board in New Franklin. How did that happen? So um, I actually did some criminal defense work as part of my private practice. And Mayor Paul Adamson was a criminal defense attorney as well. And I ran into him one day and congratulated him on becoming mayor of the city of New Franklin. It's, it's a smaller city. So I think he was surprised to meet somebody else that, that's from out here. And I explained to him that I very much wanted to be involved. I, I believe in being involved in our communities. And he called me and said, hey, I've got this, this opening on the Board of Zoning Appeals for an alternate. And I said, absolutely. I came down, I observed, see what they did. I, I chatted with the board and um, I became an alternate. And then in 2018, I became a full board member. And for the last two years, I've also been voted in as the chair of the Board of Zoning Appeals. So um, what the Board of Zoning Appeals does is if somebody wants to build or make a change to their property that may fall outside of the scope of what is permitted by our city of New Franklin zoning code, they file to have their appeal heard in front of our five panel board. So you're kind of an intermediate administrative board that um, your decision could be appealed to Common Pleas Court in Summit County, correct? That's exactly right. Great, great. So um, actually, the, the, the jurisdiction of courts of appeals um, is very broad in terms of the subject matters that they cover. So um, it is everything from uh, juvenile justice to regular criminal justice, to civil suits, to administrative, um, to domestic, to probate. So you've covered quite a few of those areas already in your short career. Actually, it's not that short of a career, but... <laughs> Um, your enthusiasm is, is, is really contagious though. Um, now talk to me also about, um, uh, the, a leadership organization you were selected for, um, and I, leaders under 30, is this what it was? You could 30 for the future, the greater Akron chamber of commerce, 30 for the future. I was one of the 2021 award recipients. And I, I, I felt so fortunate and blessed to be a part of that group because they recognize um, leaders or emerging leaders, leaders, people who have really established themselves professionally with their volunteer work, civically in the Akron area. And so when I, I was nominated, I had to go through an application process. I submitted the application, my materials. I had to provide references, I believe. Um, and I'm trying to think back. I, I believe those references were called. So everything checks out. And, and so when I, I received news that I was going to be awarded with that, um, that honor, I felt just so excited because the diversity of the group of recipients that year was amazing. I, I was meeting with people who I don't think I would have otherwise had the opportunity to meet. There were you know doctors, entrepreneurs, business owners, attorneys, and so hearing their background and what they do and their involvement, it made me think, okay, we've got, we've got a group here that's, that's ready and committed to making sure that our communities and our kids and our families and that everything we are doing is going to be better for the next generation. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so um, if you are elected to the Court of Appeals, um, what kind of perspective do you think that you'll bring to the court? I think that my perspective is going to be very much, um, I believe that courts belong to, I think I've heard you say this, courts belong to the people. I want to prioritize people in the courtroom. And I believe that we are public servants 
And I don't want folks to forget that. I actually, I, I'm laughing a little bit because I believe I followed you when we were at a Wayne County meeting and we were speaking and I was like, oh my gosh, Justice Bruner just said what I was going to say. People are going to think I'm copying her. And then I, I took a step back and I thought, okay, Justice Bruner, who's on the Ohio Supreme Court has the same perspective that I do. I felt elated to know that these court systems, our judiciary, we are here to serve the public. We're obviously also here to apply the law, make sure that we are being impartial, laws are being followed, victims are being served. But at the same time, I'm also here to help people along this process, to realize that there are mental health epidemics, that there are you know, opiate epidemics, and to not, the way I see it is people don't wake up and say, hey, I wanna go to court. So I want people to understand the process. I want people to take you know, advantage of the process and really understand what courts are here to do. We're here to apply the law. We're here to make decisions. And I want to do that in a way that is actually truly serving the public. Oh, that's wonderful. So um, I, I was really kind of amused. You, you are involved with um, a group uh, that I think it was called Hope Meadows that is um, helping with equine therapy for young people, but yet you said you've never ridden a horse. <laughs> that is accurate. <laughs> so um, I became involved with Hope Meadows. It was actually very random, very fortuitous, if you will, that the board has described it as the stars aligning. So I was looking for just a couple more activities to be engaged in. And I found this, this ad on volunteer match dot, I don't know if it was dot org or dot com. And I thought, wow, this sounds like a great organization. I started doing some research into it. And it turns out that they do work with victims of human trafficking, um, which is something that I have done throughout my time in private practice. I represented, I was the guardian ad litem on restore court, which is a specialized docket at the Summit County Juvenile Court dedicated to serving victims of human trafficking or those who have been identified as high risk for victimization of human trafficking. And so when I met with Hope, Hope Meadows, they're, they're wonderful people. They, they provide equine therapy for um, those who have mental health diagnoses, for human trafficking, for eating disorders. And no, I have never ridden a horse. So I walked into the interview and I was just in awe. I was, you know, what they were, I was petting the horses. I was feeding horses and they asked, have you ever been, you know, do you have a history of riding? I said, not once. And so they are uh, very excited to try to get me on a horse now. And I, I can't wait for that opportunity. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, um, is there <clears throat> anything that you want folks to know in particular that we haven't discussed today? Um, you know, not necessarily anything in particular. I do want, you know, people to know that I truly am what I represent to the public when I am speaking. I do believe in public service. I, I am committed to making sure that the courts do prioritize people and folks in the courtroom. I am committed to diversity. I'm actually a Native American. I, I am a status tribal member of the Alderville First Nation in Canada. I am an Ojibwe. And so I think that that also brings a unique perspective to my um, dedication to diversity. I have a diverse history of practice, which I think will serve me well with all of the different cases that are often heard by courts of appeals. And I just, I, I'm very committed to this position and serving the public. And I, I hope I am given the opportunity to do so following the election in November. Oh, I'm so happy that I had the chance to interview you today. Um, such an interesting background and I appreciate your commitment and your enthusiasm. So for those of you watching, this has been Achieving Justice with Magistrate Amber Crow from Summit County, who's running for the Ninth District Court of Appeals that covers Summit, Medina, Wayne, and Lorraine counties. And I'm Justice Jennifer Bruner of the Ohio Supreme Court, candidate for Chief Justice. This has been Achieving Justice. Thank you so much, Magistrate Crow. Thank you so much. And I appreciate the opportunity. And let's go vote Crow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.